Hi guys, welcome back to my channel after so so long. But I'm here with another video and this time let's talk about Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle is a part of respiration in living organisms. It acts as an intermediate between glycolysis and the actual production of ATP. It can also be called as tricarboxylic acid cycle or also known as TCA but it gets its name that is Krebs cycle from the person who discovered it whose actual name is Hans Adolf Krebs. Let us talk about where does Krebs cycle exactly take place. Now in eukaryotic organisms Krebs cycle takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria that is basically in the inner membrane of the mitochondria but since prokaryotes do not have mitochondria the process here takes place in the cytoplasm itself now let us talk about when does this process take place you know about glycolysis if you want to know in more detail please do check out my video on glycolysis the link will be given now Glycolysis is the process in which glucose, which is a 6 carbon molecule and the main starting reactant, is reduced into pyruvate, which is a 3 carbon molecule. Now, since it is a 3 carbon molecule, we get 2 molecules of pyruvate in order to conserve, conserve the reactants basically. Glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm and the product of glycolysis that is pyruvate is now taken to the TCA cycle or the Krebs cycle. Now the first or the intermediate step before TCA is the oxidation of pyruvate to give acetyl coenzyme A. Now pyruvate is a 3 carbon molecule all right but acetyl coenzyme A here is a 2 carbon molecule. So you may ask, where did this carbon go? This carbon is released as carbon dioxide during this reaction. So now we have the release of carbon dioxide. Along with this, since pyruvate is getting oxidized to acetyl coenzyme A, there is reduction of NAD plus into NADH plus hydrogen. So this is how the intermediate process takes place. There is also involvement of an enzyme known as pyruvate dehydrogenase because it's getting oxidized, so dehydrogenase. And this is also supported by the magnesium 2 plus ion. Now, let us start with Krebs cycle. So, Krebs cycle starts with the last product of oxidation of pyruvate, that is acetyl coenzyme A which is a 2 carbon molecule. It combines with oxaloacetic acid, which is a 4 carbon molecule, in order to give the first product of TCA, that is citrate. Now, since a 2 carbon molecule and a 4 car carbon molecule have combined in this reaction, citrate is a 6 carbon molecule. And now, each step of TCA cycle is catalyzed by a separate enzyme. So this step is catalyzed by citrate synthase and from the name you can know that citrate is being synthesized, right? Now the next step is the synthesis of alpha ketoglutarate or alpha ketoglutaric acid from isocitrate. Now this process is involving a loss of a carbon atom. So alpha ketoglutarate is a 5 carbon compound and this carbon atom is lost as carbon dioxide. This reaction is catalyzed by isocitrate dehydrogenase because isocitrate is being oxidized to alpha ketoglutarate. Hence the enzyme involved is a dehydrogenase. Along with CO2 there is also synthesis of NADH or NADH from NAD plus that is basically reduction of NAD plus into NADH so since this is reduced alpha ketoglutarate is basically the oxidized product it's a redox reaction the next reaction is the production of succinyl coenzyme A from alpha ketoglutarate now again 
This is a reaction that involves loss of carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. So, succinyl coenzyme A is a 4 carbon compound which is produced from a 5 carbon alpha ketoglutarate. There is a loss of carbon dioxide and there is also reduction of NAD plus to NADH and H plus. So, since this is being reduced, succinyl coenzyme A is an oxidized product and hence we can also figure out the name of the enzyme involved in it that is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase because succinyl coenzyme A is an oxidized product. The next step now after this reaction is the production of succinate from succinyl coenzyme A. This reaction involves no loss in carbon atoms so the succinate remains as a 4 carbon compound but this involves the production of GTP which is produ produced from GDP which is added with the phosphate group to produce GTP and this reaction is again catalyzed by an enzyme known as succinate dehydrogenase that means succinate is being oxidized to fumarate which also means there has to be something that is getting reduced for this reaction to happen. So now FAD plus is reduced to FADH2 and you will know the significance of this molecule later. Now fumarate is finally reacted to produce malate. Now and this reaction is catalyzed by fumarase and you can remember this, uh, this enzyme by knowing the reactant that is fumarate so it's easy to remember. Now malate is finally converted back to oxaloacetic acid that means the 4 carbon malate is converted back to the 4 carbon oxaloacetic acid using malate dehydrogenase. Okay, and as the name suggests, there is oxidation of malate. Hence, there has to be something that is getting reduced, that is NAD+, which is getting reduced to NADH plus H+. So, you can see the cycle has taken one full turn for it to produce back oxaloacetic acid from where it started. Let us look at what all has been produced here. There are two carbon dioxide molecules. There are three NADH molecules. And there is also one GTP and one FADH2 molecule. Oh, here is a small bonus for you all. This is a mnemonic I made on my own. So it goes like, oh, Chitra is so knowledgeable she sucks failing maths so basically it means that she is so knowledgeable that she almost sucks at failing mathematics i don't know how that makes sense but it made sense to me and i hope it helps you too so i'm just gonna go through on how you're supposed to remember this mnemonic it basically goes like o oxaloacetic acid chitra is citrate is so isocitrate knowledgeable alpha ketoglutarate she succinyl coenzyme a sucks succinate fumarate failing at malate maths you know that glycolysis leads to the production of two pyruvate molecules but in the tca cycle we have only considered one molecule hence the final products are always two multiplied by the number of them produced hence there is always 2 into 3 NADH produced, that is basically 6 NADH, and there is always 2 into 1 FADH, 2 into 2 carbon dioxide, and 2 into 1 GTP being produced as the final products when we consider two pyruvate molecules undergoing oxidation. Now, the significance of these are that 1 NADH is basically equal to 2.5 or an estimate of 3 ATP and 1 FADH2 is equal to 2 ATP 
and 1 GTP is also equal to 1 ATP which basically signifies that these molecules when taken into the electron transport chain produce these many number of ATP as a result. We will learn about electron transport chain in the next lesson I guess. So that is basically it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know all of your video suggestions. Thank you.